hollers and hills of West Virginia. It's Heavenly Hills Homestead with another episode. Stay tuned. Boo! Everything looking good. Looking a okay. Oh, I know, Mr. Rooster. Everything looks good. Plants are looking healthy, big, full. That's what we like to see. So I'm going to show you down in here a pollination that we've done this morning. So hang on one second. All right. So got this down here. Um, it's got a weird lobe shape on it. Show you here. And you see, she's she's very funny lobed shaped. So I'm going to zoom in there for you a little bit. See how weird her lobes are? Um, don't want to pollinate them like this. Another cute beetle. I hate them things. I kill every one of them. Um, don't really like the lobe shape. It's a one, two, three, four, five lobe. Try to, I think maybe even a, a sixth. Yeah, hang on a minute. One, two, three, four, five. It's a five lobe, maybe a possible six definitely a, a, a odd i don't know what's wrong with it over here on this side you can see there really odd but anyhow we pollinated it didn't have much um to choose from today had to use the 2350 ginger i only had one 1347 by uke and um or excuse me i had one 1883 by uke one 1347 Rotobaw and one 2195 Teal. So, or Tile. Uh, there was no other ones. Really, I mean, I could have selfed this one to the 1088. This is 1088 Bayou, so I could have selfed it, but I didn't want to self it, so I chose the 2350 Ginger, which that's what was in it already. It already had 2350 Ginger in it. So we just made those genetics a little bit better. And you can kind of tell by the shape of the fruit that that's what that is. And let me show you here and try to zoom you back out. All right. Take you around here and show you the fruit here. You can see the fruit is a longer fruit, really nice shaped fruit. And so um, you can tell that's definitely got the 2350 ginger in it because of the shape of it. So very long fruit. Uh, nice looking don't like the lobes but that's what we got so that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna use that's what we're gonna keep 
that is uh, that has been pollinated and and will be the keeper fingers fingers crossed praying that the lord blesses it <laughs> that's that's the keeper right there so uh we'll get in here today and hopefully bury some of this up some of this main up need that needs buried we're pretty far behind on the burying. We're back up into there. You can see the last note I buried up there. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about nine so far that we need to bury. So anyhow, I'm hoping that we'll have all of these pollinated and done by the end of next week. I'm hoping every every pumpkin plant will have one growing on it by next week the plants might not be as big as i would have liked but you got to get them growing so the only thing i know to do is just start pollinating everything and uh and go from there um the plants will eventually catch up and fill in so that's i mean it's really all you can do but uh anyhow um this plant is really big it's roughly I don't even know how long that is. Probably 17, 18 foot. Somewhere around in there. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 20 21 secondaries behind it so that's pretty good in fact that's that's really good 21 secondaries pushing this one it's going to be a bit of a challenge because it's on a hillside literally you can see we are on a hill look at this see how them are them them t-posts are leaning that's the hill we're on a hill big hill so it's going to have some issues i would say but what i'm going what i'm planning on doing is right here in this area i'm going to try to level this out flatten it out whatever you gotta do build it up you know what i mean uh, on, up here on this side kind of level it out over here on this side to where it's it's level growing so uh, i'm going to try to do that i'll try to do that on all three of these plants to where they're kind of growing level um once i know that that one has took and is doing well i will terminate the main over there and then grow this secondary out tertiaries forward terminate the main and then grow those secondaries forward and then terminate all the ones on the back side of it so uh, i'll show you more about that later i do have a theory on my 2195 tile plant that i want to try out this year let's go talk about that real quick all right so 2195 tile plant pretty for sure two things was wrong one i buried my mains way too early that was numero uno issue this year trying to get ahead of them trying to get the um the the roots started um and trying to keep them pinned down from getting wet from the rain um uh, i messed up and i buried way way too early i know that now so next year just stake out better if you have to just stake it out every you know 12 inches or so and and do the best you can to try to keep the wind from blowing them around all right once you get them secondaries out you know about uh 18 inches or longer and then you can start burying um anyhow we're not talking about that right now what we're talking about is the next thing and I, and the other issue that i had outside of burying was i was low on my phosphorus it should have been higher and for some reason it wasn't and i don't know what happened there but hopefully we've got it moving in the right direction now we've got this plant that is weird looking now right we have this main that is now our secondary and we have a secondary under here growing that is now our main way out there and i have my first pumpkin on that that uh, that will be the one that gets pollinated and that will be the keeper hopefully out there on the very tip you can see it right there all right so that's gonna be our girl hopefully 
Um, got some secondaries growing on this, all right, but not many. There's not a lot of secondaries to speak of on that second. There's on that main, which was a secondary, there's not a lot of secondaries on it now. So looking at that and understanding, I have this, I have this secondary here, or this main, which is a secondary now, right here. And I have some other stuff, other secondaries back here that are now growing tertiaries. Here's my idea. Because there's not very many secondaries on that main, for many reasons, some because I probably picked them off when I was trying to use it as a secondary. Because, uh, you know, if you notice, there's there's just not a lot back here this direction, which would have been the earlier part of the, of the secondary. And so, uh, anyhow, there's that. And um, I was sitting there thinking it last night, and, and even a couple days ago, I thought about this once before, and I said, well, what stops me from taking these secondaries like they are using these tertiaries all right letting it grow whatever secondaries it will grow but mainly letting these tertiaries do the biggest uh, biggest job so basically i can wrap these secondaries like this one right here wrap it back up and let it go through there wrap this one around let it go through there and just let these secondaries uh basically produce right and and do uh or the tertiaries rather um let them produce and do what I, my lack of secondaries are and here's the thought behind this because if you look the main is right there so these are should hopefully pull from behind and then throw up to the vine that's kind of my thinking on this all right I don't know if it will happen, but that's what we're going to try this year. So I'm going to try to use tertiary growth to make up for my lack of secondary growth. Okay. Um, and like I say, all I'll do is I'll start training these to go back up and around. Right. And they'll go, they'll cross over the secondaries. All right. And then they'll grow outwards like that. And they're basically, uh, pitchforking them back. Um, so like like this you just take that thing right there and you'll take it and let it grow back that way you see what i'm saying it'll cross over the secondary and then it'll continue to grow that way okay that's what we're going to start doing with all these tertiaries to make up for the lack of the secondaries that's on that main because there's just not many and we got to have we got to get some food and water and nutrients from somewhere so you got to have some vines somewhere so that's how we're going to grow this one I'll try to show a picture of what I'm thinking, draw a picture or whatever of what I'm going to do, and you know, see if uh, see if y'all can understand it a little bit better. I know it's probably difficult to envision. But that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over here real quick, and we'll check on our Tiger King. That is now, what, two days old now? She's looking good. Looking good. All right, looking good. I need to get in here and bury and stuff today on this as well as prune. So we'll get that done. And then um, when we get that done, I'll... Uh, I'll show you some stuff that I'm going to be using called Dicanil. I use it um, on my plants. It's a fungicide, but I use it to to do a lot of stuff. I use a lot of fungicide to do a lot of stuff. So I'm going to show y'all what we do with with it. All right, there's that. Let that keep growing that way, just like so. All right, we got a really nice long secondary here. I'm gonna let some tertiaries probably grow, fill in all this. I don't know, there's the stumps. Probably need to let the stump area be dry, so we'll leave that stump area dry. And I gotta go out here and pick off the leaves off of this one because, I don't know, it might've took, 
1883. There we go. Might have took one wheel. We'll see. I'm hoping it did. If not, I got another nice long one right there. So, I want to see. Docks. Thir uh, 1965 will probably open. Uh, Monday, Tuesday next week. So that'll be pollinated. It's a, a very small plant, uh, but it, it's it's trying to grow quickly. So and I've I've grown some nice big ones on some small plants. So um, not really worried about the, the size of the plant because I mean last year I grew some very very nice pumpkins. You know, nine hundred thousand pounders. Um, on very, very small plants. And Doc can verify. <laughs> they, were, they were tiny plants. So anyhow, um, yeah. So I'm hoping uh, we'll get that done and uh, everything. So let me go finish up what I gotta do inside, come back out and uh, we'll jump on this stuff today. Get all this uh, buried and all that good stuff. So let's get to it. Oh yeah, and I gotta set up the uh, giant green squash today. I got my sand, so we'll have to set those up. Um, uh, I'll show you that process as well. How we set that up with the foam board, which is right there behind the greenhouse there, and uh, all that good stuff. So, all right, let's get to it. I'm gonna set this up. So, you're gonna need a tape measure. I got these because I gotta cut the other went off it's actually aborting itself that's kind of sad anyways we need a drill Come on, my drill bit uh this one is 1764 drill bit so it don't have to be precise i'm just telling you around about the size holes that i'm going to drill in you don't want great big holes and you don't want too small of a hole you want a good enough size hole that Water will be able to, to get through uh, and, and get away from your, your plant. Also got the dacanil out. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with it today. First, let's go up here and cut this one out. I don't wanna do this. Really ain't got much choice. Dad, I sip it on it. It's out of there. You can see it was aborting itself for some reason. Don't really know why it was aborting. The other one aborted as well on uh, the first one that we pollinated on that other one up there. Um, so they, I mean, they sometimes they just abort. You know, you just never know what the what the issue is. But there you go. You can have it. Um, but you definitely want to get them off when you notice that they're aborting. You just want to go ahead and take them off of there. Um, no, you can't have it. I'm so we'll move, move the walking Mommy, board uh, right now. I can only uh, have one. Have one? Really yeah. hard to keep any it needs a kind one. of uh, need to have one, Daddy. space. Need to have one. And I, I gotta go get the stirrup hoe and weed that. But anyhow, uh, you also need a, uh, a um, don't y'all touch them, okay? Okay. Um, your, your foam board, and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Gonna do that. There's our foam board. Let me go get my stirrup hoe and weed that real quick, and then we'll proceed. All right, I'm gonna 
rake this out here just in a moment. In a moment. Um, show you what we're gonna do here. I actually, I gotta get me a utility knife. So, also went and got a paintbrush real quick for the dacking you'll, you'll see what we'll use that for in just a moment. Um, what you're going to do here, let me get you down here where you can see. You're going to measure half of the length of the board. It's eight foot. So you're going to take and measure four foot. Is it like so. Is it? And you're going to cut it right there along that. You see it? Marker. All right. You put a mark there? Use your tape measure if you ain't got a straight edge to do it with. Just use your tape measure as a, as a line to mark it. And you cut it? Yep, and cut it. So there's that. Yeah. And one sheet will do two pumpkins, or should do two pumpkins. And this, last year I had half inch. This year I went and got one inch. Hopefully it'll do a little bit better than last year's half inch stuff. Dada. Then all you gotta do is come back here on the back side and just cut, it. cut the, uh, the uh, film off the back, the just like so. Set that one aside for later use, like this, and now you're going to drill some holes in it, all right, and you just want to, want to drill your holes, you know, kind of sporadic, and it'd be perfect, just, you make sure, want to make sure you're going all the way through, though. center at it there see what you got looks pretty looks pretty good to me so I'm gonna rake this out now rake it level and rake it out put all those garbage out here Last year I had one and had it grown 
level, it would have probably been a whole lot better of a pumpkin than what I got. So, kept having to mess with it and, and move it and everything, trying to adjust it. And uh, there's a lot of unnecessary things had I understood uh, what I was doing last year and, and understood that they need to be as level as, as you can get them. Huh? You can't make them always level, you know, especially like here in West Virginia, about everybody grows on somewhat of a hill. But you do the best you can to uh, to try to make it as level as you can. And so, we're just gonna level up the entire area right through there, best we can. Plus, we're gonna be as well. So, wanna try to do the best we can to, to shade everything out. So now we're going to put this on here. I'm going to get the walking board. Put a walking board here on this side. Walking board on the other side. And we're going to try to adjust this the best we can for this fruit now. This limb right here is gonna to have to come out of there. You can't have that because it's uh. Last year I left them, and I should have cut them all off. But I was leaving the the um, the, the leaves like this one. I was leaving them here, and they really they just need cut off. Uh, once you figure out that, that fruit's gonna be there, just take and cut the leaf off. Be done with it. You, you know, it sucks, but what sucks even worse is when they rock back and forth, back and forth, and continuously scar up that uh, that baby fruit. You know, whether it's a green squash like this or, you know, something else like a, a pumpkin, a real pretty orange pumpkin. That leaf sits there, and that stem is full of little, little, uh, little sharp things here. Let me show you, in case you've never seen a pumpkin stalk before anyhow uh, you can see there all those little stems and stuff there that's uh that's cause that'll cause the uh, scratching of the pumpkin and stuff and it'll how pretty it is it can really damage and scratch it up quite quite bad so uh, next thing we're gonna want to do this vine needs to come back a little bit more. I got another one right here, another um, green squash right here. So if that one don't take, we will pull on that one there. Let me see if I can get this. Or uh, we will pollinate that one right there. I mean, uh, let's see. Very careful how you do this, okay? I mean, very, very careful. So now that's out of the way. We'll cover up the roots again. Get all the roots buried back. So that they're happy and healthy and doing their thing. All right, so now there's that. Now you can see. This is pretty drastic. That, that secondary right there is going to have to come back as well. Some. Now, I'm going to go ahead and move that secondary. You can set them in there, caddy corner. The, uh, the pieces of foam, you can caddy corner them if you would like. Um, I don't want to do that this year if I, can't, if I can help it. I'd rather just set them in there straight and uh, let them do their thing. Of course, we'll put them caddy corner if we have to. I want to try to get them in there as straight as possible this year. So, I'm going to set that in there just like so. In fact, gotta, I'm going to have to move some of this dirt out from here. Move some dirt. Because we got to put sand underneath it. So, let me uh, pull this out of the way.
Grab some of this soil. Like so. that now you need your sand. about a half back this time and we use more later as we need it. All you're wanting to do is try to control the way that this thing grows, right? You're just wanting to, to uh, do the best you can to, to help it to lay down, to manipulate it, to, to give it the best chance of growing and keep optimal growth possible. You also need to cover them just like that, but we're going to do that here in a second again. I'm going to show you what we're going to do right here on this real quick. So the dicamel is a fungicide concentrate. And we use it to paint our blossom ends and sometimes our stem ends, like any kind of bad place we find. Because uh, uh, funguses are notorious for... Uh, for you know, taking hold on stuff pretty quickly. So we just put a little bit into the cup here, like so. Put the lid back on. Take our paintbrush. And we're gonna go to everything today, or every one of these plants today. They've been pollinated and they're drying out. We're gonna start painting them. So you just take it and Paint it really nice, get it fully coated, all right? You don't have to wet it down for the concentrate, so uh, just go ahead and do your thing there. Paint it as best as you can. Get every inch of that as, as possible. Might have to go to the other side there and get it. But you wanna make sure you're, you're getting them as best as you can. You don't wanna leave any, any spots open if you can help it. Paint them blossom ends just like so. Again, coating every piece of it possible. And then let it dry. Throw your shade cloth back over it. And that is how we set up our giant fruits. Yeah, whether it's a giant squash or a giant pumpkin, that's how we do it. So I'm going to go around the yard and uh, 
going ahead and, and diaconil all the rest of them that need it and uh, get my phone out of the hot sun got any questions about this part of the video go ahead and ask but that is how you set one that's the pumpkin patch the ones there with the stakes are the uh, Atlantic Giants the other ones are jack-o'-lanterns Atlantic Giants are hard to grow anyhow I'm going over here a little better connection I'm sure y'all remember what it looked like still can't get nothing to grow on that road I don't know what's wrong with the dirt so we're gonna leave it alone right now there's the cucumbers coming to life have surpassed I planted by seed and I have surpassed those who have bought plants look at them crook neck squash I already trimmed them back too I trimmed everything back trimmed the tomatoes back trimmed the squash back pepper plants there they're trying to come along they they had a rough life I don't know what happened to them but they they're coming to life and there's there's some more tomatoes down that row and everything with a white cup is a tomato row out there corn on the far end I'm gonna walk around there and show you there's the tomatoes peppers over here there's uh, green peppers all them pepper plants they had a rough life I don't know what happened to them for some reason this year the peppers gave me a tough time but we got it going we finally got them started and they got more on the way jalapenos and bananas coming to life from a seed there's a bush crop and pickling cucumbers down here and ones on the top are straight eights cantaloupe and watermelon down here and look how that right there has come to life you go back two weeks ago and you'll see even a week ago you'll go back and see that this lettuce wasn't nothing it was it, it come up i planted it in a tote it come up i transplanted it and it stunted look at that corn that corn is a month old one month corn up to my thigh see i want to know my little secret to all this the green beans up there i didn't try i didn't had to plant the green beans twice because of bugs look at them up there that's a week and a half, them green beans up there in them hills. And these, all these tomatoes right here, all these plants, them's all seeds that I started. I'm going ahead and throw them in the dirt because I do better when they're in the dirt than I do when they're in the cups. And they all started from seed. But anyhow, and just so you know, look at, it, look at them now because two weeks from now, they ain't going to look like that. They're going to look like them over here. Two weeks from now, they are going to look like them. And those of them being trimmed up. So, my secrets. I'll go on ahead and let you know. Some of you probably already know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, hang on. So, we harvested the kohlrabi out of there. You can see that giant swede right there. Look how big that thing is. It's massive, y'all. Um, so, we got that growing in there. We have a giant red cabbage growing right there. We're going to come in here and we're going to fill all that back up with plants. Uh, we have some quinoa. We have some lemongrass. And then we have some borage. And we're going to kind of put this stuff in there amongst it and put some tomato plants in there as well. So we're going to heavy crop it again like we did. Here's everything over here. We're just going to pull all the leaves off of this. Take the kohlrabi inside. Uh, eat it or pickle it. And then we will... Um, we will take the leaves and feed that to our animals. Um, I did pull out the giant cabbage and here is the root stuff. It was just too shaded over here. It wasn't getting enough sun. So I'm gonna try to plant this out there somewhere, probably over in my pumpkin patch and just see if it, see what it'll do out there in the pumpkin patch. You know what I mean? You just never know. It might grow a big, beautiful head. It might not do a daggone thing, but definitely needed more sun. So we're gonna give it more sun. I pulled everything off. It has the bulb right here that it can work from you know and and i do know that it will uh grow from this you just gotta you know, just gotta plant it so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna plant that here in just a little bit and see if it'll grow better you know of course away from shade and everything that it was getting way too much up here 
some of these tomato plants are not what I'm wanting. Anyhow, we're going to finish weeding this out and get this cleaned up. And then we're going to be planting, like I said, the lemongrass stuff. Then we're going to move to the other side, clean it up, and get it ready to plant uh, a new set of crops. And then probably about the beginning of August, I will plant more kohlrabi, get it going, and then we'll, we'll grow it out uh, from August all the way through um, until... It just don't want to grow anymore and hopefully we can get some seeds off of it um i hope I'll, I'll probably let one or two go to seed that way we got seeds and then uh, the rest will harvest and eat so it just wasn't growing anymore really much up here and so i just wanted to go on ahead and harvest it while i could the snails are eating it up just kind of switch things up for now you know it's, it's pretty hot and stuff to try to grow kohlrabi it's a pretty good long one good job so we're just gonna that's what we're gonna do like i said we're gonna put different tomatoes in here and our borers, our quinoa and our um, lemongrass and stuff in here. And uh, yeah, so I'll be back in a minute when we get all that planted. Not a bad harvest, I got a pretty decent amount. Gotta take it inside, we'll clean it up, but definitely nice little harvest. Wasn't, like I said, wasn't a ton, but for what that was, it's pretty decent. So we've got some stuff planted in here, lemongrass, quinoa, chives, tomatoes over there on that side so it can grow up the banisters or the railing whatever uh boars white and blue boars which is a flower that tastes like um cucumber and you can use it for a lot of different things look it up if you don't know what it is it's very good we'll be doing some videos of it as soon as we get some to harvest then we have some chinese spinach back there in the back uh, over here by the greenhouse i planted my um wonderful wild strawberries still got to plant the alexandrias somewhere but it's at least a start right here for those um over here we planted a few things lemongrass uh and some other odd and end things um that are through there uh we've planted peppers and stuff as well up here right there's some peppers we planted pepper or those are tomatoes excuse me and uh, some more tomatoes up there in that corner. Planted uh, peppers along the fence line and the giant pumpkin patch. Over here, we planted um, several of the giants left for this year to grow. Um, we have uh, the uh, eight kilogram um, giant cucumbers here uh, right there and there from thomas over in the uk then we have um four cng 25 or two excuse me 21,500 hot peppers here we also planted over there uh, we have uh the cook the heb and the brown and then we have pumpkins and then two bushel gourds just see which one wins out and we'll grow that so um by the long gourd trellis we planted the 12.9 pound brown cucumber over there by the long gourd trellis um the middle long gourds for some reason started to die this is the second time they've died there and don't know why but they did so i just went ahead and planted uh cucumbers around that so we'll have those at least hopefully <laughs> to grow anyhow i planted those there and then i planted two browns up there uh, in the front yard uh two of the 12.9 browns up there in the front yard so that's what we've got done today uh, we also fixed the other flower bed there um, on the side of the house right here kind of show you that real quick and then what baby Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think. So we've got this pretty well cleaned up now. Um, gotta get in here and finish planting some stuff uh, tomorrow. Uh, we'll just come in and plant a few uh, quick greens and things that'll grow. Once we get that planted in here, hopefully this flower bed will take off again and be doing well. Um, so yeah. That's uh, that's what we've done for today. 
Um, got the uh, got the green squash set up, pollinated some things, and um, yeah, feeling feeling pretty good today. So we got lots of things planted. Plant some more stuff. It's just not really important right now. We'll show you all that later. Still got quite a bit left to plant, but we'll just keep knocking it out like we have been today. Uh, every day we'll just find a nook and cranny and and fill everything we fill every place we have up full until we get it all planted. So anyhow, guys, we uh, we appreciate you watching. We'll see you tomorrow right here in the Hollers and Hills of West Virginia. Don't forget to smash that like button, that notification bell. Good job, here you go. Thank you. Don't forget to share, yep. There you go. Good job. And, and subscribe. subscribe.